Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about triangle centers. The first center that we will learn is called the circumcenter. The second is the incenter. The third center is called the centroid and the fourth center is called the orthocenter. Let's get started with our first construction, the circumcenter. Okay, so our first construction involves a circumcenter of a triangle. So to get started, let's first make a triangle using a straight edge. So at this point, we can draw any random triangle we would like. The goal is to find the circumcenter. So let's label this triangle with vertices A, B, and C. So the key in constructing the circumcenter is to construct the perpendicular segment bisectors. So let me write this in here. So perpendicular segment bisectors, okay? And we already know how to do this from our previous constructions. So what we wanna do here is take the compass and actually select one of the segments. For example, let's say we select segment AB here. Okay. And we want to select a width that is more than half of segment AB. So we draw an arc below and one above. And then we keep the same exact radius, go to B and draw an arc above and one below. So at this point, we want to connect these two arcs of intersections. And there you go, we have a perpendicular bisector. So that's perpendicular at this point, and these two segments are congruent. Okay, so now we wanna do the same thing with another segment. Let's say we pick segment BC. So we do the same thing. So we make an arc above, one below, or on the left and on the right, and then from point C, we draw another arc here. Okay, so now we can connect these points of intersections again. And here we go, we have another perpendicular bisector. Okay, so it turns out that these perpendicular segment bisectors intersect at a point, uh, which I'm going to call, um, let me call it O, okay? Uh, denoted by the circumcenter of the triangle, okay? So that point is called the circumcenter. So let's label this here as circumcenter. Okay. So it turns out that the circumcenter is the center of the circle for which all three vertices lie on the circle. Okay. So what we want to do here is try this out. So let's put the center on O. And then we select the radius from O to one of the vertices, and it actually should go through all the vertices, okay? And there you go, we were able to create a circle that is circumscribed about the triangle, or we can see that the triangle is inscribed inside the circle. So it turns out that this is called the circum circle of this triangle. Okay, so this was the first construction. Let's now look at the second construction, the incenter of the triangle. Okay, so our second construction involves the incenter of the triangle. Uh, the incenter is basically the center of the circle for which we can inscribe a circle inside this triangle. The key here is again to construct the angle bisectors. And as a matter of fact, you only need two of the angle bisectors instead of all three of them. Because again, when we draw the angle bisectors, two lines intersect at one point. Okay, so the first thing is to label the triangle first as A, B, and C. And now we want to select two of the vertices to draw the angle bisectors. For example, let's say we start at B and we know how to draw the angle bisector. Um, first, we need to draw an arc, okay? And then from the points of intersections, we draw two more arcs such that these two arcs intersect at this point over here. 
Um, so now we want to connect B or vertex B with that point and extend the line. So now we have an angle bisector here. Uh, let's do the same thing for point A. So again, we'll just repeat the process. All we need to do is construct the angle bisectors here. And then we connect again vertex A with the point of intersection of the arcs and extend the line. Okay, so it turns out that if we would have to construct another angle bisector at point C, that angle bisector would also be concurrent, means that it would intersect at that same point, okay? So I'm gonna call that point I as the in-center, and it turns out that that is going to be the center, again, as I mentioned before, the center of the circle that is inscribed inside the triangle. Now, if we want to um, construct a circle inside this triangle, then it has to be tangent to all three sides, okay? So there's one of the properties about tangents and circles that it turns out that the tangent has to be perpendicular to the radius of the circle. So if we want to draw a radius, that radius now has to be perpendicular to one of the segments. For example, either segment AB or segment AC or even segment BC. So let's say we pick segment AB, and at this point we want to make it perpendicular that goes through point I, and it's perpendicular to segment AB. And we know how to do that, right? So we uh, put the compass on I, and again, we select the width on the compass such that it intersects segment AB at two different points, okay? So there you go goes through these points here. So let me label these points here, okay? And keep in mind to keep the constructions always nice and neat, make the arcs big enough so that it can be distinguished as an arc drawn with the compass as supposed to a line with a straight edge. Okay, so now at this point, we want to, again, select a different width or the same width, it doesn't matter, but we want to draw an arc here and then keep the same width, draw an arc from the other side. Okay, so now we connect point I with this point of intersection here, okay? So if we would have extend this, it will go through this point, okay? But it turns out that this is gonna be perpendicular now and that is the radius, okay? So if we now put the compass on I, and adjust the width of the compass to be the exact same width of the radius, then we should be able to draw the in-center here, okay? Okay, so now you may wonder, okay, what happens here? Why is it not touching? Well, there's something called construction arrows, okay? And as a matter of fact, uh, there are many construction errors. Even in engineering, there's a, an entire field of analyzing errors, okay? For example, the construction error is uh, due to our hand, due to the compass itself, uh, due to our eyes, and so on and so on. But it doesn't really matter because as long as all the constructions are shown and are correct, you will still get full credit on the regions. But anyways, let me label here again, this is the in-center. And now this one is called the in-circle. Okay, and that's basically how you construct the in-center of the triangle. So our next construction involves the centroid of a triangle. And I'll explain at the end what the centroid means in real life. But anyways, this can be achieved by constructing the medians of the triangle. So as you recall from the definition of the median, the median is the segment that connects the vertex of a triangle to the opposite midpoint of the segment. And in this case, again, we only need two medians to construct the centroid of the triangle. Now, how do we find the midpoint? By constructing the perpendicular segment bisectors again. So this construction is actually very similar 
to the circum center of the triangle, but it goes a step further by constructing the medians. So let's do that. So let's say from B, we construct an arc on one side and on the other. And then from C with the same width, we do the same thing. Okay. So now this is here, the perpendicular segment bisector of segment BC. So let me call this point M because now what we want to do is connect A or point A at the vertex with point M. Okay, so this is now the median, okay? So let me label this median. And all we need to do is draw another median. So let's say we draw the median from point C to segment AB. So again, we want to make an arc above and below here. And we do the same thing from point A, okay? And if the arcs don't intersect, they have to actually intersect. So make sure they intersect. If not, we can extend the arc with the compass with the same width. So now we connect these two points. And let's say that this point of intersection, we call it N. And now we construct a segment from point C to N. And that is now also the median. Okay, so the median would now go through a specific point, okay? And that is actually the centroid. So let me denote that point as P, okay? And let's call it the centroid. And that's basically it. That's how we do the construction, okay? Uh, there's no circle associated with the centroid. So there is no circle that we can draw from P that is either circumscribed or inscribed inside the triangle. So what is the centroid? So the centroid is something like the center of the shape or the center of the mass. So let's say you had a homogeneous material that is shaped in this triangle. So you could balance this entire shape at that point on the tip of the pen. Okay. So if you would have to cut it out, let's say a piece of wood or a piece of metal, you could actually find that point the centroid and balance it on the tip of the pen. Okay, so that's it. So let's look at the next construction now. So our last construction is called the orthocenter of a triangle. And that can be achieved by constructing the altitudes of two of the segments of a triangle. Now here we're looking at two different cases. One is if you have an acute triangle and one what happens when you have an obtuse triangle because it turns out that the orthocenter does not necessarily have to be inside the triangle, but it can also be outside as in the obtuse case. So let's get started with the acute triangle. So here we want to draw the altitudes. So let's say we want to draw the first altitude from C to segment AB, and we know how to do that. So first we put the center or the compass on C and we select the width that goes beyond segment AB. And we want to make sure that it intersects the segment at two different points like that, okay? So now we want to take these points of intersections. Let me draw a dot here, there you go. And from these points of intersections, we want to draw two more arcs that they intersect outside, okay? So for example, we draw an arc here and then with the same width, we draw another arc, okay? And again, we want to make sure that these two arcs intersect at a specific point here. Okay, so now we want to draw the altitude, okay? And keep in mind that this point does not necessarily bisect the, the segment here because uh, this is only the case for isosceles or equilateral triangles. So let's draw another altitude from B to segment AC. So we repeat the step. And we select the width of the compass big enough that it intersects the segment at two different points. Okay, so now we can see that it intersects the segment at one point only, but not at the other point. So what do we do in this case? 
we simply uh, extend that segment. Okay, so let's do that really quick. And we want to extend the segment. And now we know that it intersects at this point. Okay, so now we repeat the steps. We draw two arcs from those points. And then we connect point B with that point of intersection, okay? So there you go, we have now another altitude, which is perpendicular to segment AC. So that point here, I'm going to denote as O because that is now called the ortho center, okay? So what about in the obtuse case? Well, let's do the same thing. Let's construct the altitudes really quick. So let's say we construct now an altitude from point D to segment EF, okay? But as you can see, the altitude is going to be outside the triangle, okay? So in order to construct the altitude now, all we need to do is extend the segment so that it can intersect the arc that we will be constructing from point D, okay? All right, so then we take the compass at point D draw an arc okay so now these are the points of intersections and then from those points of intersections what we want to do is draw two more arcs so we're basically repeating what we just did before okay so here's one arc and here's another arc from E okay so now we can connect this all right, and there you go. Now we have an altitude here, okay? So let me call this altitude here. Let me label it. And now we want to do the same thing with point E, okay? If we had to draw an altitude from F, we actually can do that too. It will go this way, okay? Here the altitude will go this way. So let's, it doesn't matter which one we pick. Um, so let's pick the altitude from point E. So we repeat the construction as we did before to construct the altitudes. Okay. And there is the altitude now. Okay, but the altitudes need to intersect at a specific point. So in order to do this, you want to now go backwards with the altitudes, okay? And I might actually go outside the paper here but it turns out that um, the altitudes will intersect at a specific point. Maybe what I can do is add another paper here. Let's do that, okay? Okay, so let's do that. So you guys have an idea what this means. So there you go. I'm gonna call this O, okay? And that is the ortho center. Now, again, if you had to construct the altitude from F by extending this segment, you can clearly see how the perpendicular would also go through this point, okay? But anyways, that's how it looks like for the obtuse case. The altitude uh, intersect at the orthocenter outside the triangle, okay? So that's basically it for today. Uh, again, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.